so far, most of the operations that we have available to us are things that we know how to undo. For example, we can undo addition with subtraction. That is, in order to answer 7 plus what equals 12, we need to calculate 12 minus 7. Multiplication, we can undo with division. That is, to answer the question, 8 times what equals 48, we calculate 48 divided by 8. But there's one thing that we don't know how to do, and that's any operation involving exponents. We don't have an operation to answer what to the second power equals 9, what to the fifth power equals 32, 2 to what power equals 8. We don't have operations available for any of those right now. In this video, we're going to be discussing an operation that will answer this question. These two questions are going to have to wait for later. So suppose we want to ask, what number to the second power gives me 9? There are two possible answers to that question. Just by trial and error, we see 3 to the second power. That's 3 times 3. That's 9. But also, negative 3 to the second power. That's negative 3 times negative 3. Negative times a negative is positive. So that's also 9. Now, it won't do for an operation to give us two possible answers, right? It wouldn't do for 12 minus 7 to be 5 and another number at the same time. When we have an operation like this, we want it to give only one answer. Of the two possible answers, we choose the positive one. We say... The square root of 9 is 3. And what we write in symbols is the symbol we have a check mark and then a line over whatever we're taking the square root of. The square root of 9 equals 3. This symbol is called a radical. And it's important that we have this check mark at the beginning. And it's important that the line extend all the way over whatever's inside the radical. If we have multiple operations, radicals are evaluated at the same time as exponents, and radicals act as grouping symbols. That means we have to do any arithmetic inside them first. So for example, if I have a square root symbol, a radical, and inside it, the sum 4 plus 5. That means first I do this addition inside. And then I think, what number to the second power is 9? I know that 3 to the second power is 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. On the other hand, if I had the square root of 4 plus 5 with just the 4 now inside the radical, well, first, radicals happen at the same time as exponents, which is before addition. I think what to the second power gives me 4? Well, 2 to the second power gives me 4. And so I'll have 2 plus 5, which is 7. Notice that those are different. So it's important to pay attention to what is written inside the radical. To calculate a square root by hand, we'll use trial and error. So that just means, say I want to take the square root of 49. 
I want to say what number to the second power gives me 49. Let's see. 5 to the second power is 25. That's too small. 6 to the second power, 6 times 6 is 36. Still too small. 7 to the second power, 7 times 7 is 49. Ah, that's what I want. Square root of 49 equals 7. Just continue to try taking the second powers of numbers until we come up with something that gives me 49. On a calculator, the square root is usually the second function of the square key on most scientific or graphing calculators. On the TI-84, if we look carefully, we can see the little blue radical above the square key. If we hit second and then the square key, on this calculator we get a radical followed by a parenthesis. So we could take, for example, the square root of 289. We type in 289 and close the parentheses, and it's 17. Depending on the specific version of the calculator you have, your calculator might just show whatever you're taking the square root inside the radical. In which case, if you want to enter more things outside the radical, you'll use the right arrow button to get out of there. So again, second and then the square key. Type in the number whose square root you want to take, close the parentheses, and hit enter.